Please be seated. <clears throat> Again, my name is Tom Dolan, and I'm here to welcome you all to this town hall meeting with Congresswoman Carol Shea Porter. Carol Shea Porter is, was the first woman elected to national office in the history of the state of New Hampshire. Carol's large family has deep roots in New Hampshire going back many generations. She grew up with her six brothers and sisters in a household that included her parents, a great uncle, and a grandmother. Her family also gave a temporary home to children and teens that needed a place to live during difficult times in their lives. Carol graduated from public high school in Durham and then worked her way through the, through the University of New Hampshire earning a Bachelor of Arts degree in social services and later a master's degree in public administration. Carol married Jean Porter, an Army officer stationed at an Army Medical Center in Colorado during the Vietnam era. After her husband left the service, they moved to New Orleans and then to the Washington, D.C. area, where she continued her career as a social worker and a teacher. She founded and directed a program to provide services to senior citizens, taught political science at a community college, and also taught politics and American history to retired federal employees. After returning to New Hampshire with her husband and their son and daughter, the Congresswoman became active in local politics, serving as chair of the Rochester City Democrats and Stafford County Coordinator for State Representative Races. During the 2004 presidential primary, she volunteered and then worked for General Wesley Clark. Carol decided to run for Congress after serving for over a month as a volunteer in Katrina ravaged New Orleans. She saw firsthand the inadequate response of the federal government to meet the needs of citizens after this tragedy and decided that the voice of hardworking families needed to be heard in Washington. The voters of New Hampshire listened to her pledge to represent ordinary middle class families and built a district wide grassroots network that elected New Hampshire's first congresswoman, astonishing state and national pundits. Carol was sworn into office in January 2007 and she is a member of the House Armed Services Committee, the Committee on Education and Labor, and Natural Resources Committee. Let's give a warm and polite Londonderry welcome to <laughs> Congresswoman Shea Porter. Thank you all and good evening and I'm very glad that everybody has shown up. I saw a lot of people outside, some happy, some not so happy and it just indicates the feeling about this right now. Now when we set up these town halls, we didn't know that by the time we had the town halls we would have voted for this bill. So we had planned to come and continue talking about the status of the bill and so I think it's really serendipity that we have a bill and we have legislation now that we can talk about and explain. Now over the past year as we've worked on this bill and we worked and worked and reworked as you know, there were a lot of rumors about it, a lot of misconceptions, there still are. They started off in August when they were talking about the death panels, remember that, that we were going to kill grandma. Now, I have an 86-year-old mother, and you heard that I grew up with a multi-generational family. So this, this bill had to pass my mother's test. And it had to get by me and everybody else who has elderly parents whom they absolutely adore, as I do, and other family members that we care about just like everybody else does. So we looked at this bill. We worked it I, on the Education Labor Committee. It was one of the three committees of jurisdiction in the House. And it's not a perfect bill. And it's not done. As we know, that as we go through, we'll have to keep coming back. But it is getting the train out of the station. For the first time, we actually have legislation that will ensure the 32 million Americans who couldn't get insurance it, this is consumer friendly. It will protect so many people who have insurance from some of the excesses of the insurance company and it will make us healthier. It's preventive care in there. So we'll go over some of the, some of the facts about this and then we'll open it up for questions. So I wanted to start off by asking if everybody got a packet because I think it is helpful because it talks about some of the, some of the legislation and timelines about when this will take effect. So let's talk a little bit First of all, this is going to help families. So we know that the cost of health care is crushing families right now. So this is going to help them. We knew we had to do something. 
the cost is absolutely exploding and we heard from hospitals and we heard from family members who got sick and lost their insurance or found out that their insurance was being canceled because the insurance company found out they had acne at age 16 and hadn't revealed it so they would be seeing the policy and so people were begging for some kind of relief but it didn't just start this year for almost a hundred years presidents both republicans and democrats have said that we need to have a health care policy for people in this country we are the only country in the developed western world that does not offer this and yet we paid two and a half times more than the other nations now if we had been tops in health care we could have said well you know we we're at least number one, but we're not. We're not. And if you look, if you don't believe me, you can take a look at the CIA fact book and it will tell you that we don't have the outcomes that we should have considering the money. We certainly have wonderful doctors. We have wonderful nurses and other health care providers, but we have not had the outcomes. We have not had the access. So we'll talk a minute. For small businesses, we know that small businesses around the country have had a great deal of difficulty offering insurance for their employees. That it has, the cost has driven them to drop the insurance. So starting this year, this will help small businesses that will be able, if they're little ones, to come in and get a 35% tax credit to help them offer insurance to their employees. So that's the beginning and it will help them. Eventually they're also going to be able to pool so that just like the big companies can, can put their numbers of people together and pool and get lower rates, the same thing will happen for the small companies. So that's going to be helpful for small businesses. We're also going to, for seniors, begin to close the Medicare donut hole. And the donut hole is when people under Medicare Part D, the prescription part, start to pay all by themselves because the federal benefit runs out and there's that hole before the federal benefit picks up again. That is extremely difficult for seniors on a limited income and I heard from them constantly about the problem they had paying for that and the choices they would have to make. So we're going to help senior citizens by beginning to close the donut hole. This year they'll receive a $250 check when they hit the donut hole. Then after that, they, they don't hold, keep closing until it's finally closed. Next year, seniors will be able to get 50% off prescription drugs that are brand name. And if you are one of the seniors, like my mother, who has to use the brand name, you know what a benefit that's going to be. We're also going to make sure that they don't have to pay for their preventive care anymore, that they won't have the co-pays. Uh, seniors can't go and just get a, a physical right now without paying for it and so they hold off and delay. So it's going to be helpful to the seniors and we're also increasing the Medicare solvency. We're extending it almost a decade. So that's going to help them as well. We're also going to help early retirees. There are people who, for whatever reason, either they can't work anymore or they retire early, but they're not ready for Medicare. You know them. My sister was one of them saying, I can't wait until I get to be 65. I don't want to wish my life away, but, but I need the Medicare benefits. Mm -hmm. And so there will be a program where they're going to be able to get health insurance until they reach Medicare. Children under the age of 26 will be able to stay on their parents' policy. Now the reason for this is right now, we know that one third of young adults at any given time do not have health insurance. And one of the primary reasons for that is because they start off at jobs that don't offer it, or they change jobs, and so they don't stay long enough to have it. So we know that also that this is going to help them. If they have a great idea, they want to start a small business, they don't have to be tethered to an insurance company job now. They don't have to stay in a job because they have insurance benefits. Every one of us knows somebody who has not been able to go start a small business because they have a family member with a pre-existing condition and they wouldn't be able to get insurance. So they can't go follow, follow their entrepreneurial spirit and create a business. Now they'll be able to. That leads me to the next point, pre-existing conditions. Insurance companies have been able to leave people out for pre-existing conditions. They can't do that. And so that is going to be an enormous help. So I've heard some people say, well, you know, I've gotten insurance. They should get insurance too. Well, what if they can't? What